Kelly from Embroidery Nurse. So today is all things St. Patrick's Day. So I have several shirts, a dress, and just a couple other items to show you. And we're just going to kind of go through the process. We're going to make the designs on Embroidery Essentials first. Then we're going to come back, stitch it out, and you guys can just hang with me while we work. I'm wearing some of my photo props because I just thought, let's get festive, right? St. Patrick's Day really isn't a big holiday to me, but some of the you know designs are so super cute. And I also have a surprise applique of the month club. And so I sell several of the shirts through that. It might not be someone that would have reached out specifically for a St. Patrick's Day shirt, but since they're part of the surprise applique of the month club, they automatically get the one that matches the season. So for March, we always do St. Patrick's Day. So look at this awesome one. This is one of my favorites. This is actually the flip sequin shirt. And I do flip sequins for almost every holiday in, in a different kind of design because seriously, how fun are they? My cute niece calls them flippy shirts and she just loves them. Um, but this one's fun. It's just the green shamrock in the middle. And if you flip it up, then it turns into silver shamrock. How awesome is that? Isn't that great? So I actually have a video I'll post on here about how to embroider with um, sequin fabric. It really is the same as any other, but if some people get a little nervous when they're working with a new material. I don't think my hat's going to stay on, but I actually love it. I buy this straight off Amazon and I can link it below. Uh, it just makes the cutest designs. Um, but yeah, you just flip it up one color, flip it down another color, and I've got lots of different um, color sequences, but this one, when I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, we have to have that for St. Patrick's Day. So um, super cute, super fun, just something different to um, add to your shop. Let's move that out of the way. When I, each, each time when I'm doing one of these sequin um, shirts, these sequins are literally found throughout the house. So if you watched my recent trip to Hobby Lobby, you'll also see some of the things that I got while I was there. I went on the hunt specifically for a green fabric to use for my um, shirts that I'm doing today. And of course left Hobby Lobby with several things. This is really in the end all I needed, a $3 remnant that's gonna work for all the shirts that I'm gonna do today. But I found some just cute stuff for um, photo props. And then this was a fabric that I originally found and had the lady cut and then realized I don't really like that as, as much for what I'm doing. Now, I'm sure I'll use it for something, um, but it ended up that this $3 remnant was really all I needed. So, you know, don't forget to look in that remnant section when you go, you might find exactly what you need. And honestly, I could have walked out of Hobby Lobby with $3 and instead I spent like 50. But that's how, how she goes. So. Again, these are just some more of my photo props that I'll use and I'll show you in the end. Uh, I'll take a couple of pictures or, or arrange some of these so you can see them or just show you the finished product <laughs> that I'll, I'll have at the end of the video. Um, but these things are fun. You can find these in any party section. I believe all of these. Um, this actually was ordered um, from an Etsy shop. It's all balled up right now, but I've got several of the different colored pom-poms, but the green one is good for this holiday, of course. And um, these things, this was bought at Hobby Lobby just the other day. And I believe I bought this at Party City. So I just, I kind of always looking out for the cute little small props that you can add to a picture. But I'm gonna move those out of the way and we're gonna get started. So I've got six shirts to make today. Four girl shirts and two boy shirts. Hey guys. So now I wanna show you how I put my designs together in Brilliance Essentials. This is absolutely hands down the best program for merging designs, adding fonts, and just creating awesome, you know, shirts. If you're interested in Embrilliance, there's a link below that you can purchase it for yourself. All right, let's go. So I have two specific designs that we're going to be using for um, our St. Patrick's Day shirts today, and it's two new designs. So I have um, picked these out specifically for my surprise applique of the month club. So let's get to it. Let me find um, my designs here. So I keep them all in flash, uh, flash drive um, just because I have so many. So sometimes um, it just takes me a hot second to find everything and just make sure I named it the right way. 
So we are going to do our girl's shirt first. So that's going to be um, applique. And it should be called St. Patrick's Day. Three shamrocks with a bow. Awesome. So this is from Applique and Embroidery Originals. Um, and we are going to do, I love how um, when I purchased this, they actually offered all three stitches, satin, simple, and zigzag. I try to do more of a quick stitch. Um, I don't like vintage bean because I'm just, I just don't cut it to the point that, that it makes me I just don't like the way it looks for me, the way I do it. And now I love others examples of these, but I just can't get the cutting down. Um, satin just takes a lot longer, but I love the look. Um, zigzag is my go-to because it just, it, it gives a good finished edge. I just love it. And it's quick, mainly because it's quick. I choose five by seven for most things, um, especially when I'm putting a name underneath it. If I wasn't putting a name, then you could do the six by 10. So I have to go right here to the PES file, and this is the Clover Boutique, 5x7, and I just drop it in place. Actually, now that I look at that, when I turn it, um, that seems small. So let's actually go grab the 6x10 PES file, which is right here, and we can, oh yeah, definitely. So we're going to click on the 5x7 and get rid of it. 6x10 looks much better. Um, oh yeah, without doubt. All right, so now we're going to add um, names underneath it. So I have chosen um, just like it. Just I love the girly and the swirly of the um, ribbon there. So we're going to go down. If I could remember the name, I could type it in there and pop it up quicker, but I can't. So I'm going to have to visually see it. Okay, it's um, by River Mill. It is the Melanie font. Love it. So first we're going to do the two inch left for the left side of the name. And our first name is Madison. So we're going to do an M. And then we have to go back and pick the center for the letters. And that's just going to be the regular two inch. And so now we're going to do the middle part of the name. And then lastly, we're going to do the last letter on the right. So we'll need to pick two inch right. And that is an N. All right. So what I like to do is move everything around so I can kind of see better what I'm doing. And we put it on one of the lines of the grid. So I like to put the swirl down flat there. And then you just literally bring each letter to where they connect. If you have to zoom in a little bit to see and make sure you're connecting, then you certainly can do that. The S you can kind of play around with to see what you think looks best as far as position. Um, then the O. And then last, the swirl on the right for the end. I think that looks amazingly awesome. I love it. All right, so I always bring everything to the center of the hoop. This as well. And then from there, I can move it around. So we'll bring this straight up. And to get the whole name, We'll bring it straight down. And I love how that um, letter just kind of tucks right in there. That is awesome. So cute. So again, I'm going to center it and we're done. I'm going to print that one out so that I have it. I just print the first page. I don't need the other part of it. Y'all, that's so cute. I love it. And I, I do like that it kind of intertwines there. So now, since I'm going to do this design a couple of times, I can literally just take the whole thing and copy it by pressing Control C, go into my next page, and then Control V and putting it in place. So I don't have to refind everything. Um, and now I'm just going to do the next name, which is Olivia.
we're doing here. And now we're going to do the boys. Um, and I've actually already done it. Um, so I'll just show it to you here. So I pulled in my clover hat. And I'll link where I got these designs um, below. And, and then just a really cute font um, here. So this is what I'm doing for the boys applique. And I'll just show you. This is the 6x10. Um, I have a 12-month shirt that I'm doing. So I went with the 5 by 7 for the 12-month. Because sometimes it's just way too big. Uh, this would be way too big on a 12-month shirt. It would fit on the shirt, but when the child's wearing it, it just it would look a little ridiculous. So Alistair's got a smaller version. Um, and I just, like I said, picked over here the 6x10 versus the 5x7. So I've already got these printed out. Now we're going to stitch them out. Okay, so let's get started. So I've got the six shirts. I already have them printed out. You guys know I like to print out my designs because this is how I match it up um, on my machine. I use the grid from Brilliance, so I have all those ready. So I've got four girl shirts and then two boy shirts. And if you saw on Brilliance, I did two different sizes for the boy design um, because they're two different ages. This is a 12 month old um, shirt, so it's gonna be smaller. So I made the design a bit smaller, but it's the same exact design. So these are gonna be super cute. In these, I'm actually gonna use some of the um, glitter vinyl and I'll post a video up here um, if you're interested in learning more about how to embroider with this and um, try it out. I've got beautiful green and gold that we're going to use on the boys shirt today. Losing it again. Okay, so I also have another tidbit. I sell supplies, right? But sometimes I run out just like everyone else. And in a pinch, when you need to have something done, you can't wait for Amazon or for any of the, you know, places that you order from to send something to you if you need it right then and there. So if you have a Joann's um, or anywhere else that sells, you know, items that you can um, sew with and, or fabric, then you can buy, I use this in place of my um, no-show poly mesh and it works just as great um, it's not quite as thick, but it is the same exact idea and it really does stitch out just as nice. But this is Pellon and it's called Embroidery Interfacing. So the blue for Pellon um, is for embroidery. And this is a cutaway. It's called Soft and Stay and um, it works just the same. So it's Pellon 380 if you ever need to reference that. And it's $3.99 a yard, so it really doesn't cost a lot. And if you have like a 40-50% off then it really costs next to nothing. So I always keep a bolt of this in case I run out of the ones that I uh, prefer to use which is from Sulky but this really does work well. It's something you can grab in a pinch um, running over to Joann's. You know you might just grab a yard of it. I buy it by the bolt because I normally buy it with a coupon but people often ask you know when they're in the middle of Joann's what do I buy here for stabilizer and they you know they do sell um, the sulky stabilizers but a lot of times they'll only have one or two or they might be completely out so this is something that you can grab and use um, in the meantime while you wait for your other supplies to get to you or honestly this could be what you use all the time I just don't think it is as firm but I really do like it and like I said I always keep a bit of this on hand so you're gonna see me using this today and I'll just be cutting it out to size all right Let's get to it. We're going to do one of the girls' shirts first. We're going to do a size two. This is for Penny. And this is just too cute. So these are from Blank's Boutique. And we're doing the ruffle long sleeve shirt. Since we're in February, well, beginning of March. We're still going to be doing long sleeve. I do allow the folks in my group to um, let me know if they live like in a warmer climate, um, if they, you know, would prefer short sleeves. Um, but all these today are going to be long sleeve. So super cute design. I will link all these below um, if you're interested in getting them for yourself. But I just cut the design out. I put it straight on my shirt and I'm just going to measure the center of my shirt. Let's see here, we've got all the way across is 11, so we're going to do five and a half to be centered. 
I did the six by 10 um, size on these um, just because I like to fill the shirt. It just looks super cute. And this is the smallest I have. So it will look a little bit um, bigger on this one. This is a size 2T, but I still think it's absolutely perfect and just adorable. So with my surprise applique of the month club, I pick a design that I have not offered before and I only offer it to this group for this holiday. And then later I will be taking pictures um, that I can add to Etsy, but it will actually be for next season, not this one but it'll be good to have. So now we're gonna put our stabilizer on the back. And like I said, I'm just using this Pellon and I'm just gonna cut it to size. So I'm just gonna lay my Durky nine by nine hoop down and just make sure that I cut it large enough for that. I will have extra on the top here, but I will save all of that because I can use that for smaller projects that I have to do as well. So just to save a bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and cut out all of the stabilizer. So I'll have it ready at least for the first two. <laughs> We'll do the first two because we can have two running at the same time. So I use my spray adhesive, put this on the inside of the shirt, flip the shirt back around, and flatten it back out. Then we're going to stick the inside of the hoop inside the shirt. That does really fill that hoop there, but looks good. Now we're going to take the top of our hoop and just try to line that up good. Perfect. So you can eyeball it just by holding it up. You can, you know, make sure you've got the same distance, you know, from both sides on the bottom. Um, eyeballing is still a great way to measure. Don't forget to use that. It's one of your senses. No, it's not, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to bring this over to the machine over here and we'll get it going. We're going to find Miss Penny on here. Y'all, this is so cute. I'm excited. I love starting a new design that I haven't done before. And I really was searching around trying to find one that is just super cute and new. This design um, was just put out, so um, it's new for everybody. But let's find Miss Penny. There we are. And we're going to set it. And then we are going to rotate it, find the center on my grid here that I have pinned on the shirt. Then I remove my paper and now I'm just going to tell it what colors to do. So we are going to do our cute green for the shamrock. And then for our stem, we're going to do green as well. And then we're going to do pink for our bow. And then we are going to do pink for our name. Oh, so cute. So I'm going to go ahead and let it stitch out the shamrock. But what I need to do in the meantime, let's get this iron hot, is put some heat and bond light on our fabric. Again, we're using our $3 rivet. And so cute. Just going to kind of match up how much I need. And I know I'm going to need to do it six times. So. To save myself time, I'm going to go ahead and cut out six. 
and go ahead and just, actually I'm doing four girls. Cut out four. And go ahead and put heat and bond light on all of them. That's actually the only piece of fabric that's needed for the girl shirt. So that makes it super easy. I do try to pick out a quick stitch. Um, when it comes to something that I'm doing multiple times just because it saves time and honestly some of the new quick stitch designs are just awesome so there's plenty of them out there I don't think I'm trying to cut corners by doing it but when you're doing multiple items then you know in, any time you can save really is talking about you know money in your pocket more things that you can do so let me get my heat and bond light out and we'll go ahead and put it on all of this fabric here and then we will get one of our boy shirts started at the same time so i'm going to go ahead and just get this one going since it's already stitched to the placement. Can't keep my hat on. Ooh, it's hot. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the tack down. So cute, y'all. So we'll let that do the tack down, and while it's doing that, we'll get the rest of this heat and bond light on. So now I'm just going to cut out with my little applique sharp scissors all around the little shamrocks. So with the zigzag stitch that I chose, um, you know, you, you just have to get pretty close. Um, but it does cover, you know, what you're cutting with the tack down stitch as well. There are kind of a lot of little <laughs> divots to the shamrocks, but like I said, this is the only thing that we actually have to put on our shirt. So once we get this um, cut out and put on the machine, then it just takes off and does the rest. So it's nice when you just have, you know, one fabric to put on um, a shirt because it really allows you time while it stitches the rest um, to be working on your next shirt. So. My motto when I've got several is just always have the next one ready. So that's what um, I'm working on here. And I do, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, but I definitely like to batch project, projects. I did um, all of my sequin shirts yesterday, the flip sequin, um, just because that's messy, right? And I just like to get it done. That's super easy too. That's just one, um, obviously one cut of a fabric. So once I cut that one, which that does not require heat and bond light because it's, um, you know, thick on its own, um, it just takes off. So that's a real simple one to do. When you're doing the flip sequin, you want to find um, a design that's open. You know, you don't, you don't want anything on the interior of it that would, you know, take away from the ability to flip the sequins. So, um, for instance, I do a heart one at Valentine's because it's just a big open heart. And um, then I have just a simple bunny that I do at Easter. And it's just a, um, you know, simple bunny outline. Outlined objects are good um, for that. Because then, again, like I said, you want to be able to flip as much as you can. And you can't really flip in the little tight spaces. This hat does not want to cooperate with me. But, you guys, I can't not wear it while I'm making these. Okay, so it does take a hot second to get in there. All these little four pointed clovers. So you have to account for, you know, this time, you know, some people will just look at the stitch out time on their machine 
but when you're doing applique, it, you know, it generally takes you longer than just what that stitch out time is because you have to pull it off the machine, uh, especially if you have some of those intricate appliques where you've just got multiple pieces of fabric. I try to stay away from those. I know some folks do this like barn scene for a birthday shirt, and that's a big no, big no in my book. Uh, just because it just takes forever, taking it on and off the machine, having to do heat and bottom light on all of the, you know, separate pieces. And then, you know, all the ones I've seen are satin stitched. Like it's an awesome shirt. I could see loving that for a kid um, birthday if you're going to the farm, but no thank you for the time involved. I charge the same things for all my applique shirts. So there is no, no, no way that I'm gonna have a shirt that takes me over an hour just to stitch out. This right here on the machine, 14 minutes, y'all. Now, again, you have to add the time, you know, of hooping, of heat and bottom light, and then cutting it out, but 14 minutes, y'all. All right, we're gonna let her do her thing. Done. It only has 8,451 stitches. Amazing! So I'm gonna save this remnant. I'll definitely be able to use this green on something else at some point. It already has the heat and bottom light on it, so it's perfect to save. Okay, next we're gonna do get one of the boys' shirts going. Um, we're gonna do the 12 month for Alistair. And this one's so cute. I love it. And like I said, I'm gonna use some of the glitter. So we're gonna cut this out. Super cute. And we're gonna find the center of our design here. And get it started as well. So we're at nine and a half, so four and three fourths. Where'd my, here it is. Grab our USB. So I don't know if y'all, if 
first I was so nervous to take out a USB and then move here you know, while it's in the middle of a project, but you can. Once it's on the machine, it's on there. So it's gonna keep doing, you know, all the stitch out. Um, but the first time I did it, I was like, oh. I don't even think I meant to. I think I like touched it and it fell or something like that. And I was like, oh look, it works. So now I know that I can move it back and forth. to share when I am doing applique I used to do the placement the tack down and the finishing stitch all in the same color when I was putting it on my machine but I quickly learned that I needed to do the tack down stitch if it's satin stitch if your finished stitch is going to be satin where it's a thicker border I do the tack down stitch in a different color so that I can see it to cut it out I don't know if it's just my 43 year old eyes I wear these pretty much only when I'm crafting. Um, I don't need them, you know, for reading, but I do need it for some of the intricate work in my um, craft studio. So anyway, I do a alternating color. So let me just show you. It can be any color, but it's so I can see it better. So like for this one, I use the gold. That way I can actually see it when I cut it out because if I did this in just green, then, isn't that cute? If I did that in just green, my eyes had a hard time seeing it. So it's just a good suggestion, um, just a quick tip to put it in a color that you can see when you're gonna be cutting it. All right, so let me cut it out and get it going. And then we'll put our glitter vinyl on there. I'm gonna send Penny back to stitch. Go on, Penny. Finish up, girl. Okay. I just love adding this little bit of glitter on here, the glitter vinyl, because it just shows such a great pop. on things and I don't like that. Just know glitter vinyl, it is, it doesn't come off. They're all chiming at me. So a lot of the appliques when they're digitized will do all of the placement and tack down stitches all at one time in the beginning. So a lot of your hands-on work is at the beginning 
And this did have um, three different pieces that were pieces of different fabric that we're putting on here. And it did, it did the placement and the tack down for all three pieces. And now I'm gonna put it back on the machine and I can basically walk away and let it do its thing. So that's nice when you have um, a multi-needle machine. If you're doing these on single needle machines, um, I would really recommend looking at Alpalicious Designs because most of her digitizing work does not follow that. It follows it where it will do placement, tack down, and final stitch for everything. And the reason why that's good for a single needle is because you don't have to continually keep changing your color of your thread. But for multi-needle work, doing it like this um, with, you know, the way majority of the digitizers put it on there um, just allows you to do. So if you look at this stitch out, it, it's a full 22 minute stitch out. And so far we're three minutes in. So the first three minutes is the only time that I actually hands on had to remove it from the machine, cut out the fabric. Now I can put it on here and for the last 19 minutes, it takes off and does its own thing. So that's very, very nice. It just allows you to do other things while it's going. So I'm just gonna tell it to go. And then y'all, oh, look how cute this turned out. Stop the press. I'll bring it closer. How sweet is that? Oh, Penny. Isn't that precious? Oh my goodness. So awesome. So I'm gonna let this one stitch out back here and um, then I'll show you all of them when we're done and then we'll take some product photos and get these on their way so that these little buddies of mine can have a wonderful, unpinchable St. Patrick's Day. All right, let's finish up. Okay, so the last shirt just stitched out, y'all. Look at this. Oh my goodness. The cuteness. Don't you love that glitter vinyl? The gold and the green, it just pops. I love it. So now what we need to do, I've already done it on a couple of these while I was waiting for the last one to stitch out, is put the um, tender touch on the back. And that's what makes it where the um, stitching on the inside won't be scratchy or itchy. Um, and I do it on all shirts, doesn't matter who I'm making it for, adults all the way down to newborns. So we're gonna put that on the last shirt and then we're gonna kinda do some product photography fun with all our neat little um, props. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is the actual last shirt. So I'm just gonna pop it off my frame and again, I'm using the Durkee nine by nine hoop which I use for all of my applique shirts. You know, it just doesn't want to participate, but I'm not giving in. I will wear my glitter hat. So we just flip it back and then pull the, um, and then just pull the stabilizer around the edges of the applique and then cut as close to it, I mean, I don't stress about closeness, but you know, just around the applique without leaving a lot of extra. We'll get our iron hot. 
Mine has an um, automatic cutoff, which I highly suggest for people like me that are forgetful. Um, so I have to wiggle it around for it to heat back up. All right, so cut that away and just have, you know, just a little bit around the edges and then just laying it flat here on my mat. I like just to do one run over before I do the tender touch just to get any wrinkles out of the way. And then this is my tender touch. And I love the um, eight inch roll because it's almost the exact size every time of my t-shirts, of the appliques. Um, so it's like a perfect, I don't have to trim any extra off. I don't have to, I just literally cut it to size. Um, so when you're doing shirts, like birthday shirts or seasonal shirts like this, where you're doing, you know, a five by seven or six by 10 design, it's the absolute perfect size. I'll link it below, but it's the eight inch roll versus like the 12 inch roll or the sheets that it come in. All right, so iron that on good, then I flip it back the right way, and then I do one more pass on the front with the iron so that I can make sure the heat and bond um, adheres and that the fabric is ironed on in place. It just looks better. I always do a glance over, make sure there's no little loops anywhere, or sometimes some names will have a jump stitch that you need to trim. When you do that, um, it's very helpful to have you know my favorite tool, my snag nabbit. Um, that's the way you can, you know, push those imperfections back through to the other side without having to um, cut the thread. Another tidbit that I have for you today, when I was ordering these shirts, every Blanks company was out of 3T long sleeve white shirts. I'm talking everywhere. I looked at Blanks Boutique, ARB, I looked at, um, AJ Blanks, I looked at um, Love That Cotton. 3T white long sleeve was non-existent. So what I did, and I hadn't ordered one of these before because I don't do sublimation, but I bought from Blanks Boutique, which now has sublimation blanks, their 3T white long sleeve sublimation t-shirt. And I was a little hesitant because um, I had not had anything like this in my hands before. But y'all, it is so soft. So if you're looking for sublimation shirts, I'm just gonna tell you right here, this is a wonderful product. It is so soft and I it stitched, I didn't know if it was gonna stitch any different, you know, being um, having polyester, um, but y'all, it stitched perfectly and I'm super happy with the quality of it. I, I don't have any reason not to use this, um, you know, when the other one's not available. So just a little tidbit, you can get a sublimation shirt if regular shirts are out of stock everywhere, um, it ended up being a great product. Um, this one, I was trying to get one of these bubbles out of the green. That looks good. All right, so looking back over all of these, I don't really see anything to pop through on any of them. This one had one little loop on it, so I just used my snag nabbit. I grabbed the side of the loop. And sometimes you can't even see it unless you look sideways. Um, so I grabbed the side of that thread and push it through to the other side. And that's all you have to do. And then that little loop is gone and it looks perfect. Um, this one looks perfect. This one, let's see, it does have a little jump stitch for one of those letters. So I'm just going to cut one side as close as I can. Did I cut it? It's a little. Eyes a lot of times have a little jump stitch to the, to the dot at the top. So I always look out for those. And then if there's a little tail left uh, that you can't cut away, then just use your snag nabbit and pull that little itty bitty edge through. And then I throw it back on my magnet. Y'all, these are so cute. I'm so excited. These are exactly how I pictured them in my head and they look awesome. So next thing I'm gonna do, let's get this iron out of the way. Let's get these scissors out of the way. I am going to take some product photos. This is probably one of the most important things that I encourage you to do anytime that you make a new product because these pictures will be invaluable to your shop when you have them to showcase. I literally take a picture of everything I make if I've never made it before. 
and sometimes some of my old pictures just aren't the best quality so I'll retake a picture um, if I get one another order so I'll link this below this is just the most amazing vinyl backdrop I just store it and roll it out when I'm ready to use it just clear off my table and voila I use a ring light to take my pictures and what I do is just get it all set up angle my picture or angle my shirt a little bit I always like to angle it I take one picture where it is just by itself with the arms down and then I take one picture close up of just the um, applique and then I take one picture with it folded. So I have three pictures for every shirt. When I do multiples of one thing, I will do a picture of it by itself. And then I'll do a picture with all of the ones that are um, just like it. So you can see, you know, what different names look like. Um, so for the girls shirts, I'll do, you know, four of them together, arrange them and take a picture because that would be a really good product photo. And then with the boys, there's two of them. So I'll do those as well. And then I will also, since this is a group, I will do all of them in one picture just so I have it and I can showcase it and say, hey guys, look what you missed out on in the Sam's Club. Uh, do you want to join, you know, next month? I've got out all of my little props that I can use. This is what I bought at Hobby Lobby. So this is new and I'm super excited about it. Um, and it's just a fun way to kind of wrap it, wrap it around, um, you know, for the picture, taking a close up of it. It's just, we have really good pop of color. I also have the green pom-poms. I have these in several different colors, but the green is obviously perfect for this. So I'll wrap that around. And then I also have these cute um, hats that have the glitter on them. So it'll be a cute little prop in the corner. And last but not least, I've had them on this whole video. Um, I'll use these fun little necklaces that I have for all different seasons. And this one specifically has clovers on it and says happy St. Patrick's Day. So I can wrap it around. So there are some really good suggestions for photo props. So hopefully those are some good ideas for you. These are just, like I said, things that I've bought along the way. I have a whole box of props and it's just fun to pull them out. Um, a lot of these things are just found either, you know, like in the um, decorative section of Hobby Lobby or literally in any like party store. I think I've got these at the party supply store. So just look around, uh, be creative when you find stuff. You might find something that's green that has nothing to do with St. Patrick's Day, but it ends up being, you know, really cute for, for a prop. Um, these I actually bought off Etsy and I bought them in different colors. The only thing I don't love about them is these balls move on this line. I wish they, they stayed in place because I always have to readjust them and, and get them to where they kind of align better. But anywho, not a big deal. I hope you enjoyed this. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Make sure you wear your green so no one will pinch you along the way and hope you have fun and happy stitching.